Okay, we want to calculate the electric field strength at point P in our diagram. So we're looking for the strength of the electric field due to these two negative point charges at this location. So electric field is a vector, so we're likely going to have to do this tip to tail or maybe with components at the end. But let's just make heads or tails that to, as to what this question is actually asking. So let's have a look. I pulled this up on the internet. It's a picture of two, op, uh, sorry, two like negative charges repelling each other. There's our field diagram for two charges that are repelling each other. The one on the left is a larger charge, kind of like this negative five microcoulomb charge. And the one on the right is a smaller charge, like our negative two microcoulomb charge. And the direction of the electric field lines is shown by the field line diagram at any location in space. Now, if I arrange these to look like our picture, so they're kind of at an angle like that. So this one is the five, negative five microcoulomb charge and the bottom one in the lower right is the negative two microcoulomb charge. It looks like what we're looking for is the strength of the electric field at right angles between these two, somewhere in here. And you can see if we follow these field lines, it looks like our overall strength of our electric field is somewhere in that region. And that's what we're trying to calculate. So how do we go about do, doing that? Well, we do it one piece at a time. So we know how to calculate electric field and we know the direction it points. So I go to point P and we know that it's gonna be attracted. The field lines are always going towards, sorry, towards the negative charge. So straight up for this one, I'm gonna call that electric field one. So that's the electric field line just due to the top negative five microcoulomb charge. Similarly, if I ignore the top one and only look at the one on the right, the negative two microcoulomb charge, there is an electric field to the right going towards the negative, just like the other one. Now, what are the values of E1 and E2? Well, they're easy to determine. We just have our formula for electric field surrounding point charges. K times the size of the charge divided by R squared. So if I want to do E1, I would simply go K, 9 times 10 to the 9, I'm not going to put any units in here, times Q, I have to make sure I'm in Coulombs though, so Q is 5 times 10 to the negative 6 Coulombs, and it's divided by the distance to point P, which is 1.8 meters all squared. Notice I didn't put in negative 5 times 10 to the negative 6 Coulombs. I've Using my diagram, I've already assigned it directions. E1 is up, E2 is to the right. No more need to put in any negatives at this stage until the end. All right, when I crank all that out, I get E1, 1.39 times 10 to the 4 newtons per coulomb. Now, I could do the same thing with E2. E2, K... Q2 over R squared. So again, 9 times 10 to the 9, Coulomb's constant, times 2 times 10 to the negative 6. And its distance is 1.2 meters. And when I run that through my calculator, I get 1.25 times 10 to the 4 newtons per Coulomb. Now the last step, I have to put those two tip to tail, put them together. So on my diagram, I've got E2 to the right, and we have a value for it, 1.25 times 10 to the four newtons per coulomb. And then at the tip of this one, I'm gonna add up E1. E1 was 1.39 times 10 to the 4 newtons per coulomb, giving my answer, which always points from the start of my tip-to-tail diagram towards the finish, like that. There's the electric field, the total electric field that we're looking for at that location. All I need to do is Pythagoras. So my total electric field is simply going to be 1.39 times 10 to the 4th all squared, plus 1.25 times 10 to the fourth all squared 
and then I have to take a square root. So it's just Pythagoras a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And I get my answer of 1.9 times 10 to the fourth newtons per coulomb. Now, what about the angle? Well, the angle right in here, we'll call that theta. I can go tan theta because it's a right triangle is opposite over adjacent. And when I want to solve it for the actual angle, I just go second function tan. I go tan inverse. And I end up getting my angle 48 degrees, and that would be north of east.